Hello friends, this is Pastor Steve Knudsen. I'm gonna provide a brief video about the proposed building program and at the end would invite your feedback and your participation. So what we're gonna talk about today are the project goals and the overall cost, talk about the timeline of development and then briefly talk about the surveys and uh, the invitation for your feedback and participation at this time. We're talking about the area in the orange uh, that you see outlined in the orange. The area in the red is around the sanctuary and that's the work that we did when we worked on the sanctuary uh, and the organ. We also did the whole roof, uh, which was a godsend since that uh, protected us in the time of the derecho. But today we're gonna talk primarily around uh, the area that's outlined in orange. There are four goals uh, that we are uh, talking about today. Now, one, for our fund appeal, we want to uh, retire debt on our first phase, the work on the sanctuary, I'll talk about that. There's some basic maintenance issues that we need to address at this time. As I've said, you either take care of them or they'll take care of you. We'll talk about renewing some specific ministry areas that they might support uh, the good work that is happening here at First Lutheran. And then we'll also talk about reaching out to ministry partners that we might be a blessing to others. So the first goal, retiring debt. There's about 545,000 left to pay on the sanctuary and the organ project. Uh, we approved that indebtedness in 2019 when we said, let's go forward and work on the sanctuary. We said at that time we would come back and we would pay that off amount, that amount off in a second fund appeal. Some have asked, well, could we just simply put that into a 30 year mortgage? And with interest rates, uh, the cost to service that mortgage would be about $50,000 and it simply would be too much. And uh, would make an impact on our budget. So we would have to eliminate some program ministry. We'd probably have to let go of some program staff person. And we just simply feel that the, now is not the time to even be thinking about that. So let's just pay off the debt. That's the first priority and let's move on. The second priority is replacing some aging maintenance uh, needs uh, around the building. Uh, the flat roof on the parking lot side is the flat roof above the uh, entrance, administrative entrance that we use. Uh, that flat roof, we are living on patch repair and it is an old roof and simply needs to be taken care of at this time. There are a number of air conditioning units up there that are about 30 years old, can no longer be serviced because they use Freon that's out of date. Um, we also have the opportunity, actually the need to take care of some brick and mortar work. Uh, the bell tower in particular looks fine in the outside, but on the inside, uh, about half of the mortar has been flaking off and that needs to be taken care of. We've got carpeting uh, around the building that's 30 years old, especially in the narthex needs to be replaced and now would be the time to take care of it all. Wind damaged entrance doors on uh, the drive through side, those doors have been blown open and blown through so many times because it's a wind tunnel. Uh, they need to be replaced so that they can work, all of them can work. We've got some electrical and window leaks and so forth. One of the things we want to do is replace uh, the electronics in the elevator so that it can work more reliably, predictably and smoothly. I got a slide here of some of the items around uh, maintenance and repair. The first uh, picture there to the left is a picture of the attic area of the bell tower. And you can see there's a pile of sand there in the corner. That's in each of the corners representing the mortar that has been flaking off and that just simply needs to be tucked pointed and repaired. The middle slide uh, shows the flat roof. It's the underlayment that has gotten soggy and wet and deformed. Uh, it's no longer uh, serving the purposes that it needs to in terms of keeping water out and to replace that. Uh, the slide to the right is one of those air conditioning units that's 30 years old uh, and it rusted out. And if we're gonna take all of these units off in order to uh, replace and repair the roof and make it good, now is the time uh, when we have a crane out to just take care of all of those matters and replacing those aging air conditioning units. We have some that are newer and we'll use those. Uh, those don't need to be replaced, but some of the old ones do. Next area is uh, looking at some key ministry areas, uh, entry into the building, narthex, parking lot, third floor and first floor. And we'll look at each of them in turn. First about the entry, I think it's important to ask the basic question before of any what to ask a question of why. Why are we talking about the entrance at all? We had a uh, consultant come who visits congregations and uh, to give an informed visit. He's been helping us with our website and just how we 
uh, sort of make an appeal to our wider community. He said, you know, when I came to your building, he came actually on the first Sunday that we were back into the new sanctuary. Uh, he said, I, I, I parked in the PCI parking lot and I did not know where to go because every door looked like a side door. There was no evident front door. So I made my way to the church and I went in the door that everybody else went into, and which was the administrative entrance. And when I got in, I felt like, uh oh, I am in the wrong place. I shouldn't belong here. One, I didn't know whether to go up or down. And two, when I went in, it felt like private space, sort of like uh, the garage door entrance into a house. And I'd never been here before and not part of the family. And so I felt like I wasn't welcome. So how do we provide a welcome? where the anticipation and welcome of the members inside matches the building and the building supports that ministry of welcome in the part of the congregation. You see an outline uh, there to the right of the administration door. Uh, think about it as a split level entry, except there are no stairs going down. You would go into that entry, you look to the right and you can make your way directly up into uh, the narthex and to the sanctuary. Here is a uh, architect's rendering of what it could look like. It just simply clearly communicates, this is the front door. This is the way in which you come into the building. You know, when we come into uh, new places, we don't necessarily read signs. We, we read the visual cues. We read the cue as where's the front door. And when we, uh, when we go there, we go to what we can see and we go into this front door and you can see to the right, there is the entryway. Uh, here's another picture of that. Uh, oh, before I get to that, there's been some question about access for elevators and so forth. And to remember that actually the access to the elevator will be improved. Uh, the drive through entrances will remain. We're actually going to install a no curb access, and I'll show that in the parking uh, slide, in which there is no curb. You can just simply go from the parking lot onto the walkway. There will be a continuous plaza walkway from uh, the new entrance into the drive through entrance. Uh, and the elevator entrance will be clearly locked, so, uh, labeled so that um, our use of uh, the elevator and the drive through entrance will actually be enhanced. Uh, here is a picture of that entrance approach from a different perspective, uh, which maybe over a little bit, but as you're coming up um, uh, from the PCI parking lot, you'll see that the proposed entrance is clearly the front door. That's where you go. There's a cross behind it. There's also a way in which you can uh, walk directly then from there over to the elevator entrance and uh, the parking spots there would be taken away. So it is a clear and direct connection. You know, if you came in the door, you think how first impressions matter to the left is what we have currently. It is confusing. To the right, you walk in, you look to the right and you can see clear as uh, and evident how you get into the narthex and into the sanctuary. I want to just take a moment to talk about that nar uh, narthex or welcome area. And the building committee has noted that it's dark and uh, the experience of that room is chopped up by all of these pillars. And really they're more kind of architectural uh, design elements. There's not much behind it, just some uh, four, by four inch I-beams. And the thought is, what if we open that up uh, to make it uh, that area more unified and uh, easy to use as a whole. Uh, here is an artist's rendering of what that could look like. You'll see that uh, it's much more an open view, uh, much more able to kind of work your way into the narthex and work your way around. A greater sense of light, there would be a greater sense of continuity of our experience in the sanctuary than moving into the narthex area. Got a floor plan of uh, what we're talking about. You can see the elevator entry drive through identified. The new entry is identified over to the side where you would walk in, take the stairs up into uh, the fellowship hall. Uh, some of the pillars have been removed because there's nothing behind them. So we accentuate uh, the use of that open space. Uh, the blue circle up above identifies where a single use bathroom would be installed along with the men's bathroom and the women's bathroom, which would remain. And then down below the coat closet would be turned into a uh, the, the kitchen and where we would serve donuts. We've got to have the donuts. You'll see over to the side, there's a red cross. And one of the things we've identified is that currently the busiest intersection at church is right in front of the women's bathroom. 
And if people came in through this new entry, they would still have direct access to the restrooms, but you wouldn't have quite the grand central station of coming and going back and forth in and out that we have currently. So it, it would feel more appropriate in, uh, in a sense of traffic flow and how all those spaces would be experienced. I want to talk briefly about the parking lot. Uh, the green squiggle is you'd have that no curb access. Uh, the red arrows identify sort of that walkway from PCI to the new entrance. You could make your way directly uh, to the elevator entrance. Uh, the parking stalls are angled so that can be dry, uh, safer for driving in and uh, backing out. Um, and we would also uh, integrate the curb around uh, just kind of a normal parking lot. And the parking spots that are angled to on the top of the page, which are facing PCI, we would cut the grade down. Right now, there's a grade that you uh, kind of have to drive up to for those parking stalls. We'd level that out so that it would be more comfortable to use. Renewing third floor ministry area for children. In a quick nutshell, it's to simply communicate communicate, we're ready for you, it's a great place to be, and that the spaces sort of would match the energy and vitality of Pastor Katie and the ministry team there. We're just talking about paint and color, carpet in the classrooms, some automatic safety locks on the doors. Uh, to the left, that's what we currently have. It really doesn't say much, you know, children. It's more of an adult institutional space to the right. While that's not literally what would be put there, it would be a way of communicating color, form, shape, carpet, that could make a great difference. Renewing the youth space down on the first level, it, again, it's to communicate, this is a great place to invite a friend, walk in, we're ready for you. And the idea is we have two large rooms down at that end that could be connected. Uh, they were the youth room and originally was a preschool room. That preschool room can no longer be used uh, because of code. We don't have an outdoor play yard for preschool. So now we have an opportunity to connect those two uh, rooms together. Uh, one side for food and games hanging and the other side for teaching small groups and gathering. Can support Sunday high school gatherings, lock-ins, great space also for outside groups to use uh, the facility. Here's a picture of what it could look like. We're actually on the what's called the preschool side, looking across over to what would be the youth room, and it would be a larger integrated space where a lot of things could happen. Reaching out to ministry partners is just a simply a way of saying we are more than just ourselves. Can we designate some small portion of what we raise uh, to make a difference in one of our partner uh, congregation ministry uh, endeavors. You know, a dollar here can go $20 in Tanzania. Uh, and even a small part of 2-3% could make a huge difference over there. And maybe we'd want to do something with a local partner, either Willis Dady or Homeless Shelter or the Wellington Heights Community Church. It, uh, the particulars of that have not been uh, worked out entirely. It's more a matter of principle uh, to include that as part of our uh, fundraising goal. Total project estimate including debt service, uh, contingencies, uh, inflation, everything is about between three and three and a half million dollars. Building committee is identifying repairs, painting, staining that we can do ourselves. This project's a little bit different and would allow uh, congregation members to sort of uh, add uh, enhancements uh, uh, to the building. We have to recognize these designs are specific, but they are preliminary and it represents the best effort of finding a cost-effective solution to the goals at this point. Again, looking at these goals, these would be this would be the order that we would accomplish these goals of retiring debt, re taking care of maintenance, then renewing spaces, and along with reaching out. Well, what's next? Well, it's a time of information and feedback. May, the James Company is going to give a report on our readiness and capacity. Our goal is June 9th to have a meeting of the congregation and deciding on a fund appeal. And the goal would be for that fund appeal to happen in the fall of 2024 or when we're ready, if we're not quite there. But I believe we'll be ready in the fall of 2024. And then in the spring of 25, to have final plans and a final congregational vote to proceed and to move forward. Got a survey here. Uh, we invite you to provide your feedback to these plans. You can uh, find it on the homepage. There are also paper copies located in the narthex and in the office. You can complete it, place it into the survey box there and help us uh, with your input and feedback. I hope this is helpful and I wish you God's peace and blessing and have a great day.